Hi, my name is Adrian William, and in today's video, I will be discussing with you a very important question that is asked by a lot of dental schools in the United States. So, usually, uh, dental schools will ask you, as a foreign trained dentist, what is the difference in dentistry you have observed back home and in the U.S. And uh, this question usually comes when you mention that you have done shadowing or you are a dental assistant in the U.S. or Canada or you've been a hygienist. Then they will ask you, well, what is the difference that you have seen? And I'm going to share a couple of points from my own personal experience that will help you understand the, the difference in dentistry uh, from third world countries and from the U.S., and one of the things that I've learned over past is avoid saying that my country doesn't have insurance system or my country doesn't have CAD CAM. Rather than saying that, I would say in the U.S. I've seen there is insurance system. There's the presence of technology like CAD CAM. So I'm using a more positive perspective and talking about U.S. rather talking negative about my home country. So that is a point that you want to consider, like avoid saying anything negative in your interview because people remember you from for that negativity that you express in your interview. So avoid doing that. So the first point that I want to mention that the difference in dentistry from third world countries, whether it's India, Pakistan, or Middle Eastern countries or South American countries, one of the major differences is the presence of insurance system. So it's not just the doctor and the patient. There's a third party called insurance system, which regulates a lot of treatments about the payments and what can be covered and what's not covered. So the presence of insurance system kind of change a lot of factors in the U.S. And in addition to that, America is one of the most litigious society. Everybody's waiting to sue somebody who's rich. So there are legal factors that play a major role in dentistry in the U.S. And as a dentist, as a healthcare worker, you're supposed to, bound, you are bound by the law. In third world countries, the legal systems are still very flexible for doctors and dentists because you can still get away with a lot of things because you're a dentist or you're a doctor, you're a healer in the society and people pay a certain level of respect to you. Up here, you're a dentist, you're a doctor, you earn a lot of money. If you don't bind or you don't follow the legal system, you can get sued. And that's one of the other important factors that you realize in the U.S. And I believe along with that legal system, laws like HIPAA, OSHA, and if you don't know what is HIPAA, you can Google it. Uh, you can Google OSHA. That's very important laws, patient confidentiality, writing down notes for every patient. That's very important. In most third world countries, there is no system of keeping records because it's not, it's not electronically maintained. Even I remember when I was in my residency, we would write notes and we will give it to the pa We will put it in a file and give it to the patient to keep it with them. But during the next visit, the patient will lose all that record. So even if we would try to keep those records, it would be very difficult. But in the U.S., because it's electronically maintained data, because of that, uh, they can keep records of anything that you're doing. But the third point that I'm going to talk about, since everything is uh, recorded electronically, there's a lot of threat uh, from the cyber aspect. So dentistry in the U.S., since everything's electronical, it faces a lot of cyber attacks all the time. And that's a huge problem because as a dentist, as a dental assistant, as a manager, you have to be aware at all time that you are securing your systems, you're logging out, you are using secure channels, your passwords aren't breached because you don't want to lose patients that are, that can be sold on dark web or God knows what can happen with that. So the technology part is very good, but it also brings a certain level of threat. So that's one other factor. One other factor you can talk about in U.S., then dentistry, the approach is more comprehensive. So in third world country, people just come in and tell you, we have a pain in a tooth, can you pull it out? Or do an examination. But in U.S., uh, the right approach with dentistry is that you're supposed to do a comprehensive exam. 
when a person comes in, you look at their chief complaint, but then you follow towards phase one, which is where you look at any caries or any decay or any disease in their body. You want to remove that. You want to take care of their. You want to. You want to remove any uh, periodontal disease, all of that, and then you want to rehabilitate any missing teeth by giving implants or anything uh, of a prosthesis. So, what I'm saying in a brief, in a brief manner, what I'm saying that dentistry in the U.S. is much more comprehensive. You don't look at the just. You don't just look at the problematic tooth, but you look at the complete oral cavity the whole health of the patient and you try to come up with a complete treatment plan which improves the patient's oral health and improve the patient's well-being as well. So you can also mention during this question that dentistry is more comprehensive. One other factor that I've seen that dentistry in the U.S. Uh, is much more based on evidence-based dentistry. So there's so much research coming up on monthly basis or annual basis and things keep evolving like using SDFs, uh, using people are using ozone therapy. There's so many things that are coming up, new techniques, technology that keep coming in the market and people uh, and dentists and clinics evolve according to them. Digital dentistry, all of those factors. So you can mention that dentistry in the US is based on evidence-based dentistry and cause of that there's a lot of research that happens and things keep changing. One other factor that I usually tell people is that the U.S. economy is very big. If you want to look at the healthcare system of any country, first look at their economy. If a country is poor and doesn't have money to feed their people, well, they won't have money to invest in their health and then they won't have money to invest in their dentistry. But in the U.S., since the economy is so big, they can invest more in dentistry and because of that people have more buying power to get elective procedures, to get veneers, implants, to get uh, orthodontics or even get to get Botox. So these kind of things. So since the overall buying power or since the overall economy is so big, people have more money to invest on elective procedures as compared to third world countries. You might think, well, there are poor people in the U.S. too. Yes, there are people with low socioeconomic status, but still comparatively in U.S., people have more buying power because they can get credit lines. They can take loan for dental care. In I don't expect in India, Pakistan, the government is willing to, or the banks are willing to give loan to a person to get a gold crown or to get an implant. So that's one other uh, difference. Other thing that you can mention is that when it comes to technology, the U.S. is one of the most advanced countries in terms of technology. They have the latest stack in anything. And because of that, even in dentistry, we have a lot of instrumentation, a lot of technology that we can use. Even as a dental student, you get loops and you are doing dentistry in millimeters. I tell people when you're wearing loops, you're doing dentistry in millimeters, your crown preps your endo, you're doing things in very much procedure and especially endodontists now use microscopes. So because of these and using 3D scanning and all that, we can go in much more detail. But in a nutshell, what's a, what I'm saying that dentistry is can be done in much more precision in the United States because of availability of technology. That kind of uh, makes dentistry more advanced in the U.S., as compared to third world countries. One other factor that you can mention is comparatively, comparatively, the literacy level regarding dentistry in, in, in a first world country is more as compared to third world countries. So what I mean, in US, comparatively, people have more dental education, thus they will come for six months uh, checkups, they will come for profis as compared to third world countries. So because of that, uh, the dental literacy is more, people are much more encouraged or engaged in their dental treatment. One other factor that I've seen over time is that in third world countries, since dental literacy is low, people don't have enough buying power or don't have enough money to invest in their oral health, 
because of these reasons, dentistry is done more from a surgical aspect. I've talked to people who have done dentistry in Kenya, in Pakistan, India, and uh, people who have done dentistry in, uh, in South American countries. When they are being trained, they are trained much more from a surgical prospect because they are told if you're sent in a, in a government job in a rural area, you are expected to pull out any teeth or you are expected to take care of any pathology that comes to you because you're the only person there who's a dentist. In U.S., dentistry comparatively, as a general dentist, you are expected to do much more restorative and prosthetic dentistry. And if there is something surgical, you refer it to the oral surgeon or you refer it to the hospital. You don't jump into it. So this is one of the other factors that I've observed that in third world countries, dentists are trained much more surgically because of the need of the society. And in U.S., because there's more advancement, there's more system, dentists are more trained towards restorative and uh, prosthetic dentistry as well. So these are some of the uh, main differences that I usually discuss with candidates when I'm preparing them for any dental school interview. But you can always research more things. You can find more differences. And specifically, if you have observed or seen anything personally when you were doing uh, shadowing or any dental assisting in the United States. But I hope this uh, these points help you prepare better. They give you a better understanding of the difference of how dentistry is done in the U.S. as compared to most third world countries. And I hope you would be able to prepare better for your interview. And uh, if you have any more questions, you can write in the comment. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully, I'll see you in a more meaningful video. Thank you.